Light me up, don't you stop Cause tonight, it's on the line Show me how, you get on down Close my eyes, take me for a ride my last vlog i say last vlog but my first vlog of 2021 which by the way guys thank you so much for all the love the comments the views everything hello millie you are gonna get me filthy i was clean i was clean it's not your part yet you're coming into it later stop <laughs> you're getting all oh you act stop <laughs> oh right stop 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 away Okay, so I was clean, but I've just been millified. We'll hide that a minute, shall we? <laughs> I was clean. Oh, it's reality. Oh, well. As I was saying, thank you very much, guys, for all your love on my latest vlog. It was my winter routine with Spritey and Lola and how I manage both of them in the winter months and the dark evenings. Of course, if you haven't yet seen it, don't worry. I will pop the link in the description below. But I mentioned it. I touched on it a little bit in the last one. This one is super duper exciting and honestly i am like a little kid it's oh i've wanted to make this vlog for quite a while and i've been waiting until something happens now i've given a little hint on instagram last night saying that it's only two days and a lot have messaged saying what it is so maybe it's not going to be that much of a surprise but we will be coming on to that later now i am aware i have had quite a few new subscribers recently and followers on instagram thank you and welcome i hope you enjoy following my journey but i wanted to do a little bit of an introduction and a bit about each of my animals now i get a lot of questions about spritey and about lola and millie spaniel who has already been shown <laughs> um and i was gonna say i get questions about mila but i don't really she doesn't get in included that much but there is a little bit of a story on how Mila came into my life. So going to share that with you as well. Going to do it in age order. I feel like I was just about to give it away then, but actually I've already probably put in the title, the new edition. So obviously the new edition is gonna be the youngest member of my animals. My animals. You're waiting until I can say you can come back over. You're third in line. No, you're fourth in line. Yes, you're fourth in line. Had to think about that. Um, so we're going to start with the oldest, which, of course, I am sure that you guys are aware of who the oldest is. It is, of course, my number one, Spritey. Okay, guys, so as I said, I am going to start with the oldest out of my animals. And it does actually work out the ones that I've had the longest as well. So it is my golden oldie, Spritey Woo, who... I'm sure, if you don't know, is my absolute number one. And I have had Spritey in my life for 14, 15 years. It's been wonderful years, hasn't it? And you will be here for the rest of your years. I can blab on about my animals for probably quite a long time. So I'm going to try and keep it short and sweet. And even more so with the ponies, because I want to do and I'm making myself accountable, a riding journey with both of them. I wanna do mine and Spritey's. I'm not quite sure how many parts that's gonna be. When Tina is like doing multiple parts for hers and Banksy's, I'm like, yeah, we've probably got, well, we've definitely got double their amount of years, but whether I've got that amount of footage um, is another thing. And of course, then I want to do one with Lola and myself. So what I'm gonna do, guys, I did wanna also change the scenery, but it was far too windy up in the field and you will notice that I've had a change of clothes as well because I couldn't stand how much mud was on me. Not that this is much better and Millie Spaniel has already caught me. Um, they say don't work with animals and that is the reason why, but it's winter, everything is muddy. You're muddy right now, aren't you? Yes. As I'm speaking, I'm gonna drop in a few photos from over the years. Thank you, Spritey. So it will break it up a little bit there because I feel like I've done quite a lot of vlogs in front of Spritey's stable. But anyways, let's 
talk about you, which I'm going to have to try and pat myself because I think I'm going to go into too much. And as I said, I don't want to go into too much detail. So I just want to give you a bit of like their bio, really. So I have had Sprite Tea in my life for 14, 15 years, quite a long time. She was my first pony. And as I was growing up, there was a concern I was going to grow too big for her. But thankfully, my body decided to leave me as a midget and it meant that I got to keep her and you didn't have to go anywhere as she will not be going anywhere whatsoever. You'll be here for the rest of your life, won't you? And as I refer to her as a golden oldie, she is, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, 26 this year. I can't quite believe it's Brighty. She doesn't act it, mine, absolutely not at all. As I'm sure you guys are aware. You don't act your age and I hope not yet for a few more years but let's not get on to that her show name is newbridge lady which actually shout out to dad was the one who made that up we live in a location called newbridge and i think he just said one day he was like oh newbridge lady and since then it has stuck her passport was just sprite and when we were going to unaffiliated events when we were like younger and in our early days we would always put her down as newbridge lady but once we started doing riding club qualifiers, championships, they had to go by their passport name. And it was actually, well, I say mum and dad, but it was me a little bit as well, that we didn't like not hearing the Newbridge lady. So we did actually pay out and get her passport changed. Not that expensive. Don't know why we didn't do it years ago, but yeah. So we changed it. And I think somebody said the other day on one of my posts, what's the hashtag Newbridge lady? And that is why it's quite nice on Instagram. You can put that hashtag and then that's where like you click on it and it's all Sprite. So that's the reason that you'll see that hashtag on my post. Something I do get asked quite often is how big Sprite is. Now, as I had just said, I didn't outgrow her. Now people always think that she's much bigger than what she is, but she's actually a little bit like me. She's quite tiny. She's only 14 three, thought it would be easier to stand next to her to sort of show you. But yeah, she's 14 three, has got an absolute chunky neck and very much likes to use it. We don't actually know her breeding. All it says on her passport is thoroughbred cross. So I have no idea what she's crossed by. I don't know who her sire or her dam is, but they produced a good egg. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> she very much dislikes the rain, which is why I think she's kind of glad to have come in a little bit earlier this afternoon because we have been having some very heavy showers. So I think she's actually quite pleased to be in for a change, but she doesn't really like being in a stable for too long a periods of time. She's always so eager to get out in the morning. If I'm going out on Lola and she thinks that she should be coming, she gets her ants in her pan, she's pouring the ground. Yeah, she's um, a bit of a sass queen and I actually think as she's getting older, she's getting worse, but I wouldn't change her for the world. She also doesn't really like rugs, which you're probably thinking, what? Change of location. She doesn't like rugs and especially lightweight ones, but it is more specific to the field as well. She almost goes to the corners and then she feels trapped in those corners. And if she's gonna come to the gate or if she's gonna go to the next corner, she goes there at literally a hundred miles an hour. And it is actually quite scary. So I do try to only either put a heavy rug on or without a rug. She is better without a rug, even in this one and when she's up in the big field which is their winter field she will only be like a semicircle around the gate it's really really strange and i mean lola can be way up out of sight and you still don't even go up there with her then so it is really really odd something must have happened to her it she never used to be like it and then one day mum brought her in from the field and she was really quite worked up and ever since then i've been down the field i've been sat on her and if i'm on her she makes no fuss, she doesn't do anything. It is so strange, but it's one of those things that you just sort of learn to deal with. She absolutely loves cross country, loves canterpass, and loves the beach. What do you think all those three things have in common? Going fast. You absolutely love it going fast, don't you? And she is absolutely ridiculously strong. Some of the old footage I found, I'm riding her in just a snaffle, and I'm like, not a chance could I ride. No, I, I could ride her in a snaffle around a hack, but if I wanted to stop, I wouldn't have much hope. She just loves it so much. And her also, one of her favorite pastimes is splashing in the water. Now, I think I've blabbed on about you for quite a while, and I'm aware that I've still got three animals to go. So 
maybe that should be enough about you, hey? And as I say, there will be a journey vlog out. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else that I've like really big have missed, but I don't think so. No, I think that's everything. So next in the list is Miss Lola. Very quickly also just wanted to add, as Spritey is 26 this year, there is a vlog that I put out in, I want to say November last year, about caring for an older horse. So if you're sat there and wondering how is she 26 and still doing so much and everything like that and you haven't seen that one, there is a vlog on it and I will make sure that that one is also linked in the description below for you. When setting up the camera and Miss Lola knows you've got carrots. <laughs> Come over here. So, the first thing I'll let you know about Miss Lola. Now you're going to turn your phone to the camera. Oh, there we go. So, the first thing, if you can't tell, is that Miss Lola loves food. <laughs> yes. Yes, I have got a lot, but you've got to be good and stay in the camera. I'm going to double check. So, I'm going to pop this here, though, because we're actually. We're all good. We're in the camera. So Miss Lola is actually just a nickname that I call her. Her name is Lola, which I called her. Again, I'm going to go into more detail when I go into the riding story, but she actually had a different name when I first got her, which I will share with you, which was Monkey, and I decided to change it. She was three and a half when I got her, unbroken, and I always wanted a bay mare. Miss Lola was walking around her stable a little bit too much for my liking so we we're about to go for a hack anyway and I thought I'll bring her out and then I'll do it here and as you can see she's fixated on something down the field so a lot better but as I was saying I bought Lola as a unbroken three-year-old and I always wanted a bay mare and when I saw her I just I just fell in love Mwah. didn't I yes so I wasn't really planning on an a, a unbroken horse, but it was just the way that it turned out. And I produced her myself. It has been a very challenging journey, but as I say, I will go into more detail when we discuss, when I do my journey with her. She turns 11 in April, which I can't quite believe it. So it's been a fair few years that I've owned her now, but yes, turning 11 and I, bought her so that Spritey could have a little bit of an easier life and I wanted something a bit bigger and to go up the levels in BE. Now admittedly we haven't really done that but we've had a lot of fun along the way. I've gotten out to a lot of British eventing events. We've gone to quite a few championships now for the riding club and yeah I've loved it. It's been brilliant. As you can probably tell <laughs> from me standing next to her, she is a lot bigger than Spritey. I haven't ever actually had her officially measured, but I do think she's around 16.1, 16.2. I've got a little and large Spritey and Lola. As you could tell from the beginning of this, Lola loves her food. She is all about her food and she can grow her belly within seconds of breathing a blade of grass can't you? <laughs> she likes to keep busy. She's got to keep her brain occupied. She gets bored quite easily, I would say. She loves a bit of spice in her life, a bit of variety, uh, as do I, and I think as do we all, to be honest. So I've always got to be conscious of keeping her workload varied. Otherwise, she just, she just looks for trouble, basically. She is super duper cheeky and absolutely loves fuss. Now, where... Spritey isn't really one for cuddles or attention like that. Miss Lola loves it, don't you? Yeah, you love cuddles. She'll probably show me up now to say that she doesn't, but you do. You love a bit of fuss and a bit of attention and yeah. <laughs> Her breeding, so she is a British sports horse and she is out of King's Composer, which is actually a stud down here in Cornwall, which is really nice to know. And her dam was Barbarella, which was more of a showing there. But in her bloodlines, there are some show jumping lines. But as I said, it's been quite a challenging journey with her. And I can't wait to actually look back on everything that we've done and see how far we have come as a partnership. It was a whole new ball game breaking in a new horse. I'd never done it before. I'd obviously ridden youngsters, but never really started fully from scratch. So as I say, I can't wait to go through that footage and make that vlog all about you. Then moving on to the third animal in line, which is my Princess Mila cat. 
and obviously she isn't down here with the horses so I will carry on that little section and I am at home with Princess Mila. On to Mila's part and I feel like she's absolutely going to attack me in a minute. She doesn't understand this whole vlogging part and that this is all about you. So I referred to Mila as Princess Mila because that, if I ever come back as an animal, I, I can't make my mind up if I want to come back as a dog or as a cat. I wouldn't do a horse because let's get, let's face it, we make them work quite hard. But honestly, Mila, I get jealous of every day. She comes up and sits on my lap, which you wouldn't believe when I'm working, keeps my lap nice and warm and then falls asleep. I quite often will then go up and go to the toilet and she's completely sprawled out in a tight ball on the bed and I'm just like, oh, I want your life. <laughs> um, but it's quite interesting how Mila came into our life. She wasn't planned. That makes it sound like it's a proper child baby, but she wasn't planned and we wasn't expecting to get her or to get a cat. We wasn't looking for a cat, should I say. <laughs> She's hairy as well, um, which is something that gets left all around the house and I have to hoover, but it's about to get a whole lot worse. You don't realise that your life is about to be upside down. Oh, I might be giving too much weight here now. Um, but one day, Tina was getting some hay from my mum and dad's and as we were getting the bales, in like a little crack, uh, surrounded by obviously the hay, was this bunch of kittens. And we were so shocked, it had no idea that they were there. And that was the first time I saw Mila. I wouldn't be able to tell you which one was Mila out of those kittens that we saw, but we kept obviously a close eye on them. And around, they, the mum obviously moved them out of where they were and they went around another area and we kept an eye on them. One day I went up there to show my nephew Harrison them and just like sort of peer around the corner, obviously not wanting to get too close because they were feral, quite scared. Um, well, the mum definitely was. The kitten probably didn't really have much of an idea, but there was only two of them left. And we thought it was a bit strange, but maybe, I don't know what the mum does. Maybe the mum picks them up and moves them individually or like takes a couple at a time, I'm not sure. Anyhow, the next time I went to look, they had completely disappeared and had no idea. Now, one day mum was saying she could hear a cat meowing around home. And um, dad and I were like, well, we haven't heard anything. And she was absolutely adamant. She was like, there is definitely something around here meowing when I've been out gardening. And I think it was about a day later, Mila is getting so annoyed at me. I'm trying to like, just play with your face. You can't touch her body because she really doesn't, yeah, she really doesn't like it. You're not showing that you're nice and loving right now. That's a good girl. You're not in a good mood. I think she's hangry. I think she's a bit hungry. Um, <laughs> I, I should have given her a tea first before doing this and then she probably would have been a lot more docile. So a day, I think probably not even that later, dad also heard this meowing. I then got a phone call. So behind mum and dad's house is a mine shaft, which is all capped, it's all safe and everything, but hmm, I suppose not necessarily for a kitten. And dad ended up tying himself to a tree and going down the side of the shaft to save a little kitten. So no idea how she ended up getting there or what have you, but I think her mum probably had abandoned her for reasons I do understand. <laughs> I do love you, I promise I do, but she's just, she's one of a kind. As I say, she's a princess and doesn't really get her paws dirty. She's never caught anything in her life. And then it was the conversation I had to have with Chris going, can we have a kitten? Mum was going to keep her, if not as a farm cat, but following her track record, I don't think she would have been very good. She's never caught anything here. So I don't know how well her job would have been there. She would have just been sleeping in the hay most days. It took me a couple of days with Chris, but we did then get her. He lit, I can remember this so vividly. We were driving out of his mum and dad's drive and I said again, come on, you want a kitten, want a kitten? And he goes, okay then, we'll get, get her, but get her now. I'm like, Chris, it's quarter to eight. We have no cat stuff. We can't just go pick her up. We'll pick her up tomorrow. And he goes, no, let's get her now. So I flew to the range, we picked up everything. So I let you go. She's not very happy. So we flew to the range, we got all the cat stuff we needed and we then went to mum's and picked her up and she's been with us ever since.
she is most definitely Chris's cat. I often see Chris napping on the same sofa or even in bed and they will be together. She'll be completely on him and out in front or ice cream. She seems to really like ice cream and whenever Chris has got like a nice lolly or ice cream out the tub or in a bowl, she is never far away. Same with Tuna, I don't know why I'm going on to this, but I can be in the kitchen, she can be upstairs sleeping, I'll open the can of tuna and within seconds she is down there. Now I do let her obviously, once I've scraped all out what I want, I do leave a little bit in the tin for her and give her that and she, she absolutely goes crazy for it. As I say, she is most definitely Chris's cat and she is called Mila, which we spell M-I-L-A because Chris likes the actress Mila Kunas. I mean, I don't blame him, who wouldn't? She is uh, pretty nice. <laughs> That's our cat Mila now. Her, I'm gonna say her life is gonna be changed a little bit. I keep warning her, I keep counting down the days to her until something is arriving tomorrow. But you guys are gonna be watching that as it happens and we'll see how it goes tomorrow. But now on to the fourth animal that is currently in my life. And that of course is me Spaniel. Okay, and last but not least, it's finally your time, your part meals, because you've been patiently waiting, haven't you? Knowing that you are going to be involved, haven't you? And I have put, yeah, exactly. This is exactly why I put the muddy top back on, because I knew that you would jump all over me, you little rascal. Now, Millie is, as you can probably tell, a Springer Spaniel. She's liver and white, but I feel like we need to say that she's liver and grey at the moment, because you're a bit filthy. She comes home to mine for splatters in my mouth. <laughs> She comes over to mine for sleepovers, don't you? Yes, we do. Um, but she is actually owned by my mum and dad. He is my dad's dog, well and truly, because I've got you only for a couple of seconds because dad's going in the tractor in a minute and you will leave me for dust, won't you? Millie turns four in May, don't you? Yes, I can't believe that we've had you here for so, for so long. You're waiting, aren't you? Because you know Dad's in the garage and about to pick up those tractor keys. So we'll end it in a minute with Dad picking up those keys and you see how fast she runs up that drive knowing. Look at that tail going, because she knows. She's not stupid, not at all. Yeah, she's leaving me now. She turns Dad's four. Is Dad dangling? <laughs> see what I mean? She's not my dog, but I do quite often steal her to be able to go on dog walks. When we're going to the beach, um, and like I say, coming home to mine for sleepovers. She is a working dog, so she's trained with the gun. How well would you rate her, Dad? <laughs> Not speaking. <laughs> um, I know, you're pretty good, aren't you? To be fair, oh, now it's on my face. <laughs> um, I get told off because apparently I teach her bad habits, like jumping up, as you can probably tell, but I just don't, but she gives the best cuddles. I say that, and then I've had a paw to the nose, Millie. <laughs> You're so funny. Right, we've popped in a few nice... Yeah, Dad's gone. Bye! <laughs> and now it leads on to what I've been waiting for. Literally, I feel like time's going really slowly. I've done so much this afternoon, and <laughs> I still feel like there's hours to go. But I'm bringing you guys along with... Chris and I, because it's both of us going tomorrow, um, and we're picking up the new addition. <laughs> Literally, oh, it feels like Christmas has come a month later. Now, the following morning. <laughs> Sorry, washing machine's going, but I don't care, because today is a very exciting day. I don't know if you can read that. I'm going to turn the camera around. When I, <laughs> we don't do very much, obviously, because it's lockdown, but when I wrote this up, on there, I was like, oh my goodness, that feels ages away. The name is Nala. Did I say Lola, did I? The name's Nala, and uh, I can't wait for you guys to meet her. <laughs> Everyone meets Nala. Oh, she's so cute. She's got such a big day, haven't you? Just left your brothers and sisters. And is now home. Here you go, sweetheart. Yeah, I hope you go straight in the lounge. So I've got a little bed here ready for you. There you go. Oh, I'm a bit nervous. Oh, God. Are you okay? Is it... Someone's 
just got a load of confidence, haven't they? Yes, they have. You just walked all the way into your bed, didn't you? Come on then. In you go. Good girl. Good girl, Nala. Good girl. This is, as I've been trying not to film any of this, but this is Nala's little den. Oh, look at her. Look at you. Oh, somebody has just suddenly got very, very confident. <laughs> Gotta be careful not to trip over now. <laughs> you are just far too cute. Far too cute. You won't actually probably believe that I had a little bit of a blub in the car. I have wanted my own dog for years and years and years, but have never been in the position of being able to have one because of working two jobs and being obviously out of the house for so many hours. And I used to obviously work in an office. Um, it just wasn't ever possible. And Chris always said, not until you quit your second job. So as soon as that was quit, I was literally like, my last shift, I was like, I'm now looking for a puppy. We did refuse to pay into the greed of some breeders that are out there. I can't believe the prices that people are paying for puppies at the minute. Um, but we didn't have to pay extortionate prices, which is why it's probably taken us a little bit longer to find one. But we found you, didn't we? Yes. Where are you off to? <laughs> she loves my hair. We have figured out. She loves my hair. <laughs> you are so cute, aren't you? Yes. Oh. oh, this is probably one of my best days of my life. Isn't it? Just lying on my floor, like you do. Little <gasps> puppy. <laughs> oh, you are so cute. So cute. So, apologies. Now there is going to be a lot of puppy spam. What? It's in there. <laughs> it's in there. Yes, there is. There is. Oh, look at you. You're just far too cute. You're so cute. I love a little white as well. <laughs> oh. oh this is literally my day planned i've done the horses they are all done so that i could give her all the attention just so that it you know it's such a big day for puppies isn't it when they get taken away from their brothers and sisters and are brought into a new world and new people but i'm not gonna lie i think you're gonna be okay don't you yeah <laughs> She's already got into this vlogging mark. I could teach her to stop and start the camera because she just stopped it very well with your nose, didn't you? <laughs> oh, God. So cute. stop that now it's really hard isn't it because things that they do as a puppy and you think oh it's all fun and games i've watched so many videos and read so much about nip those habits in the bud but i feel like for the first couple of days for this weekend basically i think i'm gonna let go but i know it's probably bad and you probably would like go no you shouldn't you shouldn't but just let us settle in, but I think you've settled in quite well. Would you like me to put your my paw, my, my foot up for your paw? <laughs> no biting, no, no. That is definitely one that I'm gonna stop because I remember Millie Spaniel being like that and being all bitey. And again, I thought it was cute, but actually it took a lot of time to stop. So that habit is stopping straight away. The people that we've just brought her off are so lovely. They just wanted them to go to loving, working home. So the plan is, and what I've always wanted to do, is go beating with my dad. Now, I could have obviously done that with Millie. When you're out and about and um, would be on a shoot, Millie always just looks to my dad. Not that we've tried it, but I know, oh, you saw yesterday, like, if dad's going off to do something, she's going with dad instead of going with me. So that's why I wanted my own little dog. So I can't wait to get training. Get training started and then eventually get out on a beat. And the guy that we've just brought her off as well, invited they shoot every fortnight on a Tuesday and have said more than welcome to come up and has also put me in touch or given me a name and number and has spoken to him for some training if I need any help. So eek, I'm so excited and I can't wait to get started. But for now, I'm gonna have a wonderful day.
with our new little puppy Nala and yeah hope you guys have enjoyed the vlog um yeah look out for a lot of a pu puppy spam coming your way and I'm not even sorry <laughs> First time outside, and she's found the football. <laughs> I can't keep up with you. What's the football doing? <laughs> That's daddy's problem to teach you not to go for them. Watch, ready? <laughs> You're meant to be going wee wee. <laughs> it's all that exciting I can't believe how quick you've just got ex like confident and now time to end the vlog I'm not gonna lie I think I did it earlier but because of the sheer excitement and just was so like wow she's home i don't think i ended it very well so and i, I realized that i haven't actually really said much about her now i was cold so apologies that i am back in my dressing gown but i'm now starting to get quite hot because somebody is very tired and worn out after their very exciting busy morning look at her fast asleep excuse the grubby dressing gown oh my goodness She's just so cute. I just still can't believe that she's even here. I'm just like, oh, oh my goodness. You guys will, honestly, I have wanted my own dog for like literally years and years and years. And yeah, very happy tears on the way home. But yeah, I spoke to mum. We FaceTimed grandma, didn't we? Yes, we did. And mum goes, I thought you might have cried. I was like, yes, I did. <laughs> So if you guys haven't guessed, she is a cocker spaniel, a working spaniel. She's had her first vaccination, so she'll have another one in four weeks time. As I said, there will be a lot of puppy spam coming along. I'm thinking maybe do like her first few days settling in. What do you guys think? I'm just, it's just going to be a whole load of puppy cuteness. I mean, I'm, I don't know who wouldn't want that, but let me know. And if there are any particular, I don't know, puppy vlogs that you would like, let me know. Because yeah. We will happily oblige, won't we? Yeah, we will. Bless her. Oh, I just can't get enough of her. Oh. Chris has gone out um, to get some food. And it's just us at the minute. But he's absolutely... I think the word I'm looking for is besotted. Besotted? Apologies if that's wrong. I'm hoping you know what I mean. Um, he's just as besotted. <laughs> that is right as me for sure it's now time to end the vlog guys i hope you have enjoyed it and learned a bit about the the ponies the doggies the doggies i can say too um and of course mila i was hoping that they were going to meet mila and nala but mila is fast asleep on the bed upstairs and she hasn't come down yet i don't even know if she's aware that that she's got a little sister down here or not but i wasn't going to force it i'll just let her come down on her own terms so apologies that's not included because i did say that would be but i'm sure i'll capture it on camera i'm sure she's going to probably peer her head through Oh, I can't point, but through the banisters and she'll see Nala and be like, okay, maybe I'm not coming down. <laughs> she will when it's food time, I suppose. But yeah, now time to get editing. The Mac is there ready. And the rest of the vlog is actually done. So I'm doing pretty well. I made sure that was done last night so that then I literally just need to add in these little bits, get it exported and get it uploaded. And I really, really hope that you guys enjoy it. Please do give it a thumbs up, comment, and of course, hit that subscribe button if you don't already. But until next time, we'll see you guys very soon. Oh, if only they could stay this size forever. Although she can't jump up on the sofa at the minute, which is quite funny, bless her. But yeah, see you all soon. Bye.